Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Budget Planning channel. I hope you're having an amazing and blessed Friday and I'm excited to be here. I'm actually filming this on Thursday because this is my first pause and ponder uh, video. So I was trying to come up with a structure that made sense for the video and I think I finally came up with it <laughs> after several tries. So um, June's, June's pause and ponder challenge. It's it seems like a very awesome challenge. Um, I love the bottom here where it talks about, have you ever noticed that the Gospels, Jesus asked a lot of questions. It seems in every situation he's asking questions. According to the Gospels, Jesus asked 307 different questions. That's a lot of questions. Not only that, he was asked 183 questions uh, by others. Only a few or than 10 uh, were answered. Less than 10. That sounds like Jesus. <laughs> that sounds like him. I mean, every time we pray, we're like waiting for an answer. Is he ever going to answer? Yeah. Um, he answers, but he answers with a question to make us think and probe deeper into spiritual relationship with him. Um, not just the physical world here, just, you know, a deeper understanding of what he's asking and what he's saying and stuff like that. So um, these scriptures were meant for further reflection. Um, the one I chose to do for this Friday is the John 312, which was Mondays. Uh, it's the one that spoke to me the most. Um, I think it spoke to me the most because I've been watching the television series on Jesus called The Chosen. Um, if you go to the app store and just type in The Chosen, you'll see the TV series. It's free to watch. Just download the app and you can start watching them. Um, they do, um, they are solely financed through donations and um, things like that. So um, th this is not Hollywood. This is not a screenwriter or a script writer or anything like that doing this. This is, you know, faith-based people wanting to do as much of a accurate portrayal of Jesus in that time period and um, do a TV series. They want to do six to eight seasons, I think. And they're almost done funding, I think, season two. Uh, um, season one's done and it's eight episodes or short seasons, so, which is really awesome. And Nicodemus is a character in that season. And that's what part of John 3.12 is about. Is Jesus and Nicodemus having a conversation and I found this fascinating when I read just the scripture I was like okay what do I talk about I don't know enough what do I need to know and so I decided to read more and I read the chapter and it's a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus so I will get into that in just a minute and um, these are the pins I use today my Frickson erasable 07 gel pens. I love these. Those are my favorite pens. And then I used my Faith Warrior sticker book to lay some stickers down. And here's my prayerful planner. I love this thing. It's so beautiful. So happy to see it every time I get to it. And here we go. So June 5th, Friday. I did do my priorities for the day. It's my dad's birthday. Yay. Happy birthday, dad. Um, my boys have doctor appointment calls and we're having pizza for dinner. It's pizza night, Friday night, every night, every Friday. And then I laid these down. Love yourself, love others, grow in his grace every day. Um, here's my journaling prompt. And then I just kind of use some washi strip because I wrote in this whole section here, instead of writing out my, um, my plans for the day, because um, as if you've seen any of my other videos, I don't really have a lot of plans. Um, I just put my pri top priorities. I can always do my plans through my top priorities through the day and I know what to do. So, um, and especially with schools out, yay, I'm so happy. Um, distance learning was not as fun as I thought it would be. <laughs> uh, and my, my son didn't enjoy it either, but we did it and we worked on it and it was awesome. He just missed being around people he knew and the routine of school and stuff. So I put my pause and ponder over here. I read my scripture and I, w I looked, I always do this. I take the scripture of the day on June 5th and I look at it in more than one version. And I read a version that spoke out to me um, and I think it had a lot to do with what's going on in the world today. And Jesus was just laying it heavy on my heart 
And so I hope as I read this scripture here and here that um, I do it justice. I do it honor and glory to God and, um, and love and respect. So here we go. <laughs> do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Ephesians 4.26 so the version I love the most, and if you watched any of my past videos, you'll know this, is the Amplified version because it just adds so much more content and reminds me of salvation. It reminds me of sin. It reminds me of the context of the verses that I'm supposed to be thinking about that I may, my brain may not automatically go to because I didn't grow up in a church, because it wasn't drilled into me my entire life, because I need to be reminded. I need to be reminded. So this is what God spoke to me and laid heavy on my heart today once I read this version and I felt it was important to put it down here. Ephesians 4.26 in the Amplified Version says, Be angry at sin, at immorality, at injustice, at ungodly behavior, yet do not sin. Do not let your anger cause you shame nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. That really hit, sucker punched me in the gut. That hit me hard. I had never heard it in that terms. I would never heard it in that context. When I've read it in this context, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, or a version of this. Um, and I could probably find the other versions too. I never, it was always in the context of marriage. Ephesians is famous for um, helping marriages on how we're supposed to treat one another. Let me open my Bible app up again. John, uh, let's see, Ephesians 4. Oh my God, I probably still have it highlighted. Yeah. Well, I don't want the message. I want like the ESV version, let's put it that way. It says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. That's the, oops, sorry. ES, uh, Ephesians ESV version. It, it doesn't give me enough context about angry. How angry? Can I get extremely angry? Just a little bit angry, you know? But when it tells me, be angry at the sin, be angry at the immorality, be angry at the injustice, at the ungodly behavior, yet don't sin, what he's saying is we are allowed to feel these emotions. We are allowed to come to him and say what we're thinking and what we're feeling, and he's a big God and he can handle it. And so I've been pouring myself out to him with what's going on in the world today. Um, and I am refer referring to George Floyd, which that whole situation just breaks my heart. I am just devastated inside that that never should have happened. And I am angry with who did it, and I am hurting for the family, and he should not be dead, plain and simple. I don't want to talk too much on it. Everybody's heard enough. <laughs> but I do pray every day since this has begun. Whether I'm praying for the family, the Floyd family, I'm praying for their friends, I'm praying for um, the communities that are outraged because of the injustice that's happening all the time. And I forget, because it's not in my face all the time. And it shouldn't be in everybody else's face all the time, too, but it is. So I'm praying in a big way with God about the injustice, whether it's locally uh, in my own communities or around the world. I'm asking God's guidance in this. Um, but yet he still does not want me to sin in this, and he does not want the sun to go down with me in anger. And I think that's what he means. When these things happen that we just, by the time the sun goes down and we've yelled at God all day about the injustice, he does not want us to keep carrying that burden. He wants us to turn the burden over to him because justice is his. 
and he is in control and it's not my job my job is to pray so that is the only thing I know to do and I pray that me saying this on social media I hope it's received well and that those here understand I do this with love and heart I, I don't like seeing anybody hurt. I don't care who you are. <laughs> I just love people. And I want everybody in heaven, but I know that's not possible. So I just pray for everybody as often as possible. I've been doing it for months now with the COVID-19. Um, we have this thing with our church that we pray at a certain time every day, and we're praying for health. And I say health for everyone in the world, whoever's sick with COVID, whoever's sick with any disease or disability or anything that needs healing, I pray to God every night for that. I pray to God for our officials around the world, whether it's in the medical community to get the vaccine for the virus or the um, our leaders of our countries around the world. I pray for, um, and that's regardless if I like them or not. <laughs> um, I pray for, um, it's hope, H-O, P, um, provisions and protections, especially those who have lost their jobs and are financially in difficult positions or need help advancing and having better opportunities. And I pray this for every person. I say this in my prayer. Every human being on earth, Lord, I pray this and lift them up to you. I have no idea who they are, but I want them to have the protection and provisions and the exaltation of the Lord of God and the gospel so that it can be spread all over the world for as many people that want to know him <laughs> to have hope. So that's my daily thing. Um, this is what struck me today. And, um, and this is kind of my support for communities and Black Lives Matters and all of that. I'm not very big at putting that out there, but I do support and I do pray and I that's how I support. One of many ways I support. Our churches do a lot of community things around here uh, for everybody, not just one group of people, for all people, but, you know, it's, it's important to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, the actual scripture for today for uh, Hear My Prayers is the Ju Luke, I'm sorry, Luke 1, 32. Luke 1, 32, not Luke 1, 32. And the uh, journaling prompt is God revealed to me. So um, Luke 1, 32, I got it from the NIV version. I like that one the best. He will be a great and will be, he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David. And then the prayer journal as God revealed to me, and I prayed, Lord, I pray to you reveal to me my place to show the world ar around me how I can love my neighbor and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Lord, I cry out to you, what is your plan for me? In Jesus' name, amen. Because I feel there's a movement going on. I think God is working in all of us and making these changes and having us cry out to him more and more with one thing after another. And I do believe he's awakening us for plans that have never been seen before. And I don't know what they are, but I pray urgently that he reveals those to me. Okay, so hopefully I won't keep being emotional. <laughs> so I'm going to move on. I hope this was okay. I hope this was acceptable for everybody that's listening. Um, this is just what was on my heart and the Lord and I were discussing and uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys Because I love you guys and I appreciate all of you all the new subscribers Everyone that's been coming back to my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much uh, You're amazing amazing uh, women that have been talking with me and sharing with me and I truly enjoy it. Thank you so I'm going to move on to the pause and ponder. So what I've done here is just taken the whole section where I would normally write out my, um, what you might call it, my plans for the day. And like I said, I'm not a very busy woman, so I don't have a lot of plans. 
but um, John, that's the book. I'm gonna pull up John 3.12. What I loved about this and what happened when I was working on this is, um, and I spoke about Nicodemus earlier. This is a, the verse is right here. That's the amplified version. I think I have the ESV. So the ESV says, if I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So what pause and ponder did for me, I paused and went, okay, what is, who is he talking to? What is he talking about? <laughs> I need more clarification. I don't understand. And obviously I go to the Amplified all the time. It's my favorite. Um, so what I did was, is I went back and look at several verses and I kind of stopped right there at 12. So one through 12 was kind of what I read. And this is where a Pharisee named Nicodemus, who um, came to Jesus in the night. And I looked up online um, why at night. And there was a couple of theories that it was like under the cover of darkness and kind of spooky. And he was hiding from the other Pharisees in the Sanhedrin. And um, but others were thinking, no, I think it was just the only time the two of the men weren't busy. <laughs> you know, uh, Jesus had his missions during the day and you know, this Pharisee was a very important Pharisee. He was a, um, let me see my notes, high judicial council. He was part of the high judicial council that had anywhere from 23 to 71 men that were in charge of that. And um, he came, so Nicodemus came to Jesus in the calm of the evening, I believe, and had a conversation with him. He goes, he says in scripture, who, who came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, teacher, we know without any doubt that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs, these wonders, these uh, attesting miracles that you do unless God is with him. So he is stating here, he recognizes God is with him without any doubt and that he's a teacher of which means he has he has an authority of being able to speak on the subject and you know, they're having this conversation about the signs and wonders and he's un trying to understand it and these are things that Nicodemus himself has seen and heard okay as the conversation goes on Jesus starts talking and explain to him that that people have to be born again of the spirit now, we understand this because this is part of becoming a Christian and this is, you know, um, turning our faith to the Lord and it's more common knowledge to us today. So I had to put my mind and, you know, my hands and feet of a Pharisee for a minute there to think how he thinks. So this Pharisee's hearing, I have to be born again. What? How can I go through my mother's womb? That's of the natural world. And Jesus is trying to explain to him, hey, you know the scripture. You should understand this. You've read the prophets. You've read what the scripture said about, you know, the Messiah coming, essentially, is what he was saying. Um, you understand these things from scripture. Why don't you understand? Obviously, as a Pharisee, he's going to know the scripture better than anybody. But I believe this Pharisee and probably many of the others focus so much on the law of Moses and what they could physically do on earth that they weren't used to relying spiritually connecting with God. And this, what God said spiritually to, in the scriptures for them to connect. They were still in the mindset of a legalistic view, a legalistic, uh, I got to do this. I got to make these sacrifices and atone for this because this is how God said to do it. But they, generation after generation, they would forget there's a spirit of the law that goes behind it. And that, that's kind of going over his head. So by the time you get to this verse, Jesus says, if I told you earthly things, 
And I love the amplified version here. If I told you earthly things, that is things that happen right here on earth and you do not believe, how will you believe and trust me if I tell you heavenly things? So I love this addition of that is things that happen right here on earth. If I told you these earthly things, how would you believe the things you can't see? The spiritual realm that are he heavenly things. Why would he believe them? I, I, I can see why Jesus would be frustrated right here. And that's what I see. Jesus is frustrated with Nicodemus. Nicodemus is focused on the law of scripture and can't see past the end of his nose, basically, <laughs> based on what he studied, because he's only really focused hard on keeping that law because he is a man of judicial high counsel. So that's his focus of study. And he, the spirit of the law is what's being overlooked here, in my opinion. <laughs> he can't see... Jesus, the man spoken of in scripture that Nicodemus already knows so well. He cannot see that Jesus is right in front of him. The Messiah is right in front of him. It, it doesn't make sense. It's not clicking yet. And that's what I pondered on um, wh what he was saying here. If I told you earthly things, that is things that happen right here on earth, and you do not believe. So he wasn't, he's saying he's seeing these miracles. He's saying he sees and hears these things of um, wonders and attesting miracles and signs, uh, but he's having a hard time believing them. So why would Jesus tell him of the heavenly things? He wouldn't, because he's not going to believe that either, even if he tells him. So that's, it's kind of sad that he's sitting there right with Jesus and we would love to have that experience, you know, but he's sitting right in front of Jesus and he cannot see as Jesus. That just, that overwhelms me a little bit <laughs> just to think about. But I think for everyday life, for now, in today's time, as Christians, I think this kind of applies when we meet someone or know someone who isn't of faith or doesn't want to believe or fights it all the time. Um, and then they doubt everything that's said around them that's a miracle, even though it's right in front of their face. And, you know, it's got to be a God thing. <laughs> it's just got to be um, how things work out or coincidences or whatever that you see in your life. But you know, they're not, everybody else will see them as coincidences, but you'll see them as God's miracles. Um, yeah, if they can't see him for the miracle that God provided, how are they going to see and understand the heavenly things if we explain that, that to them as a non-believer to be a believer? I mean, I can see the struggle and I can see the frustration. And it's nice to know that Jesus went through that same exact thing, talking with someone right in front of him. <laughs> He, he had the same thing, had the same experience sharing his ministry. So that's what I got out of my pause and ponder. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed reading about Nicodemus. It's really got me pumped to go ahead and watch the, um, the last two episodes of The Chosen because that's the story part where Nicodemus and Jesus are sitting down. So I'm curious to see how they played it played that out as actors and one of my favorite actors is in that I don't think I can remember his name his name is Eric something um, let me see if I can find him real quick on the internet he's played in the mummy um, chosen. I, uh, you gotta love IMDB when you're talking about movies and stuff um, let's see if I can find so this is what The Chosen looks like. That's the guy that plays Jesus. That's Simon, I believe. And then Eric Avari. And you'll probably recognize him. Yeah, Eric Avari. He plays Nicodemus in it. And that was really, really cool to watch. He's already been in a few episodes. And he's very good at his part. And um, so I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Um, so anyways... 
moving on. I hope you liked this video. I hope I didn't get too emotional over here and that my pause and ponder is what you're looking for. If you have suggestions or ideas or if you're doing it a little differently, uh, let me know and uh, maybe I can incorporate what you're thinking into it. Um, but I think that's all I have for today. Again, if you need a, any prayer request, uh, if you'd like me to pray for you, I would love to pray for you. I leave my email in the uh, description box below. And um, I hope everyone who's watching is ha will have an amazing and blessed day until I see uh, talk to you again next time. Bye.